to jump down at Crampton Bowl. JSU, first game under new head coach Rich Rodriguez. First quarter, quarterback Zion Webb trying to hit a receiver on the cross, but nothing like a good old tip drill to start things off. Lumberjacks' Charles Deming picks it off, and he ends up on Jack State's 34-yard line. Very unfortunate start for the Gamecocks. Fourth and goal now at the one. Quarterback Daryl Simmons. This pass is going to go up to Trey Self, and Mr. Self is going to bring it down in the end zone. Lumberjacks up 7-0. Pat yourself on the back there. Gamecocks respond on the next drive. Webb is going to hit Matt LaRoche, and LaRoche is going to turn on the wheels. Check it out. He's up the sideline. That's a 25-yard big gainer, and that's a first down. JSU moving the chains and gets to the one-yard line. Pat Jackson barrels his way in for six, and the Rich Rod era is off to a strong start. Gamecocks go on to win big. This game was called after a lengthy delay. Yeah, folks. <laughs> so, Stephen F. Austin counts into the season with this big, big number 10 on, on their shoulder. This was a game everybody was going to point to. We're going to look at Candace Sweat went beat against a top 10 FCS opponent. We know Jacksonville State's a different level. We get it. If you look at what happened in that game, the difference between that game and the FAMU game is the difference in scholarships did not tell the whole story. The reason why Stephen F. Austin lost the game to Jacksonville State, it was really three things. One, okay, yes, they got worn out quickly. They got worn out in the first half. Up tempo, no huddle, fast paced offense wore out that big defensive line of Stephen F. Austin. The second reason why they got worn out, them boys had no idea what was going on when it comes to playing at that stadium. Which I think is the biggest difference. Because it was a, supposed to be a quote unquote classic. You know, you had a neutral site. 5,000 people showed up. 5,000 people. If Al Alcorn State can sell out their stadium, it will be the biggest crowd that Stephen F. Austin played in. Bigger than even even bigger than the Battle for the Piney Woods. We need the crowd from Alcorn State to show up. You have to show up and show out and be loud, obnoxious but respectful, like HBCUs are. Alcorn State, I've always said, has the dean of the swag when it comes to coaches. Which leads to the third, and the most important thing I think about this game coming up. Alcorn State has the better coach. All you have to do is watch that game against Jacksonville State. Crossing patterns deep, quick underneath hitches. Alcorn has more speed. Alcorn has more oomph than Stephen F. Austin. If you get into a game where you're trying to power against them, get them time to get catch their breath, time to lay up in there, you will lose this game. And it will be a bad loss. Especially at home. You must protect the reservation. It's Coach Simmons. I'm being dead honest with you. When you look at these two teams on paper, there are people going to say that you know, the bigger team is Stephen F. Austin. Yes, but in this instance right here, David not only can beat Goliath, David should beat Goliath. You know, I heard on a podcast that Stephen F. Austin won't lose rankings because of the Jackson State, Jacksonville State game 
because Jacksonville State's going up to the FBS. Which means they're still number 10 in the country. Alcorn, you win this game, you're ranked. How much mess can a ranked Alcorn State leave in the swag? Your respect that you've craved since Steve Ed McNair left will be at your doorstep on one game. But it depends on the crowd and run them boys out of the reservation. Coach Simmons, once again, I'm out.